received some football tickets from Sanford. Um, is it? Sa- I think it's Stanford. I think I said it wrong. Stanford. Um, from the dean because the dean wants him to donate a bunch of money. So you know they like to give you shit. So they, he gave him some football tickets and knowing Kamani, girl likes sports. So he's like that'll date, you know, because he actually wants to take her on a fucking date. The next day, Ben goes to the campaign headquarters because he wants to make sure like Kamani doesn't go to any more dangerous neighborhoods. And so when he goes, he walks up, he goes to her, and um, he's like, you know, I'll you know i walk with you and at first she was just like okay you know so they took the porsche batar drove to the neighborhood that they were going to walk around in and then batar also went and got them lunch it was something called kimchi and they had a little light conversation and then of course he grabs her and kisses her but it's not as forceful like he normally is and then of course she pulls away so then they go back to the precinct um and she's in the corner working on you know the basketball restoration project and then yumi walks up and she introduces herself and says oh so you must be the the other woman ben's fucking so then she proceeds to tell her how they used to be in a relationship but he was too possessive and controlling and that she was happy he was fucking other people um she said he probably was fucking a white and a spanish woman too (laughs) Because he thinks he's the United Nations of fucking. I was like, this bitch is just. So I'm like, so then she asked Kamani, you know, like, let me say this before I say the second part. That right there let you know that she felt threatened. Because there is no purpose, there is no reason for you ever to go up to another woman and be like, oh, so you're fucking him too good because he was bothering me no fucking woman's gonna do that shit like you're doing that because you know that's gonna piss off that other woman and then that'll make her pull away from the other from the man who you've seen he has he clearly has this intense type of a vibe with this woman that he's never had with you so you're trying to break it up because you can't do it on his end so you're trying to do it off this end and i mean come on Again, she don't think like she's supposed to. But she probably wasn't thinking because she was probably so mad. Like, she was like, shit, I just fucked him. And, like, here's this bitch talking to me. Like, it's a lot going on. So, I get that. But it's like, I'm I'm sitting there going, bitch, don't be threatened. Clearly, that bitch is threatened by you because she felt the need to come up and tell you that. Otherwise, what be the purpose? If you fucking him and I'm fucking him but I don't really care, we never have to speak. <laughs> So then she asked Kamani, like, oh, what do you do for, I'm a model. What do you do for a living? And Kamani's like, I'm a reporter. Well, I was one. And she goes, oh, that's why I heard Ben on the phone when I was taking a shower in his bathroom. And he was talking about shutting it down. And Kamani's like, what? So then, of course, Ben, she looks up and she sees Ben. Ben is a fucking statue. Because he already knows. If Yumi's over there, she's she doing some bullshit, you know? So, Kamani's pissed. And so, when Ben comes over, Yumi, she's done her damage, she feels. So, she excuses herself. She's like, oh, let me go. And, you know, Kamani unleashes on him. And she admitted that, he admitted to her, you know, yes, I do own it. And I shut it down. And she was just like, but why would you do that? He said, because I could not take the risk of you all doing some type of a story. And it ruins his campaign. She's like, I wouldn't do that. He's like, doesn't matter. The damage was already done. And I'm like, and I'm not going to let you further do anything else. And she's like, so it doesn't matter about freedom of the press. They don't give a fuck about no freedom of the goddamn press. He's trying to make sure his uncle doesn't pay for his mistake. And he's trying to clean it up whatever fucking way that he can. And to me, if you can't understand that, when the truth of the matter is, she's the fucking reason it happened. Because if she had never opened her goddamn mouth about that text message, guess what? There wouldn't be this investigation. That wouldn't have been in the paper. And his numbers wouldn't have taken a hit. Even though it was like a, just a two or three points hit that it took, that wouldn't have happened. So, but she's just all in her feelings because she's like... I mean, I knew it was going to close, but you should have let it do its own death. You didn't have to kill it. 
and i'm like you just being dramatic you just mad i'm like whatever that shit was dead like <laughs> don't fucking matter <laughs> so she's pissed she leaves she goes to the bus stop of course there's not gonna be a bus for like another hour so he of course is like i'll take you home she's like no she's like i don't want to be around you there's a guy across the street she offers the guy like 50 bucks she's like i'll take you know i'll give you 50 bucks to give me a ride and the guy's like okay and but you know it's his whole it's her bodyguard and she doesn't even know it <laughs> but ben has to play it off and he's like you're gonna let a whole ass stranger take you instead of like just getting in the car with me she's like i'm fine i don't care i'm done so she leaves with the guy i was like damn so ben kept blowing the phone up blowing the phone up she wouldn't answer so then he popped up at her home and she of course was about to leave and she tells him to leave and he's like i'm sorry and he doesn't apologize too often so she could tell the weight of that but she was still so pissed that she couldn't care at that moment so she's like listen i need to leave i gotta go to an interview thanks to you since you shut down the paper you know i gotta go interview for a job and so he was all like you know what do you want me to do like do you want me to give him more time i'll give you give him six months severance i'll give him even longer with their health insurance and she's like it's not about money but i'm like but what the fuck all that can do is help people so why wouldn't you agree to that you know you being just fucking selfish i just she irks me bro i just ugh, she irks me so she leaves takes a cab but then when she gets in the fucking cab she's like shit i was kind of harsh no shit sherlock i'm like damn a few days go by um she's playing that whole basketball fundraiser event goes off without a hitch ben shows up of course and he's got a proposition for her so he's like listen if you win i'll donate ten thousand dollars to the effort he was like but if i win i want my three days that i didn't get since we couldn't finish that week and so she tells him you need to take that up with jake <laughs> so then she throws a counter offer and she's like okay She's like, first of all, you need to make that $10,000 donation, period. She was like, but if I win, you agree to keep the Tribune open or reopen it because he did shut that bitch down. <laughs> he says, she says, and then if you win, I'll give you what you want. And he's like, all right. So they made a deal of course she she loses she was good she was pretty close it was close it was like you know they did a game of 21 i think it was like you know 19 21 it was close she did pretty good so part of the deal for him was he wanted her to come to the lair so he gives her like he gives like specific instructions for the woman i cannot remember her name it could have been amber but she was like kind of like the hostess at that place so he gives like specific instructions that um he wants her to take like a lavender infused bath and then he has black crotchless panties and a black sexy lace bra for her to wear as well as some black stockings and black high heels so um she's supposed to meet him in the dungeon i said oh lord this this is gonna be wild <laughs> so he took out the violet wand kit which i'm gonna put a pic of that right here because yeah i don't i've never heard of that but that's what it looks like and after he did that because that thing shocks so that freaked me out <laughs> it's like oh shit i don't like that <laughs> so apparently it has like a body contact cable so i guess it makes it safe for you to like contact like to like make contact with the body but still fuck that that freaks me out but here's the body contact cable so as they're walking around he's like you know your arse is just arse i it's so corny that he says that his your ass we're just gonna say ass i don't like that arse crap so he's like your ass is just so amazing ben was like are you gonna let me in it tonight and she told him maybe she's like if you make the child care center happen for dawson 
<laughs> I'll let you in my ass. <laughs> I was like, shit. He was like, are you working for Dawson now? And she was like, nope, but two can play this game. So he agreed. Then he offers to double the $10,000 donation if she doesn't use her safety word, mercy. So then he grabbed her legs and then he, you know, pulled them over his shoulder. And he started eating her pussy. And she came, of course. But the heifer hadn't asked for permission. <laughs> so she was like, this fucked up. <laughs> She's like, you shut down the paper, you put me out of a job, and yet I'm the one that's got to get punished. He's like, I mean, hell. He's like, you know, the world ain't, it's not fair. (laughs) He's like, yep. He's like, I'm the big bag developer that can make you come over and over again. And he was like, I know you hate me. (laughs) But the truth was, she didn't hate him. So he zapped her with the wand on the ass, and she was anything but she didn't like that shit so she was like you want my ass don't you and he was like i'm saving the best for last so she was like i'll give you a blowjob you like it you liked it before so he was like all right so he let her and he was a little rough but nothing like she couldn't handle because the truth was she couldn't get enough of that man so he grabbed her kissed her and she pulled away and then she started sucking and licking on his nipples so she got kind of scared because she thought like he might punish her um for touching him without asking permission but he didn't he because shit he liked it so he tied her up to the bed and then he pulled out a ball gag and i'm going to interject one of the pictures up so she was like how am i going to ask for permission to come if i got a ball gag in my mouth (laughs) and he was like make an effort he's like do it with your eyes (laughs) i'm like the fuck so he started fingering her and she asked to come like via muffled sounds and he you know told her you know just let it all go and she squirted all over his hand and then he got so worked up he titty fucked her and he came all over her breast and her collarbone and a little even reached her chin and then he took the ball gag out of her mouth and she like licked him clean so then he brought out the hitachi i don't know if i'm saying that right but i'm gonna put a pic of that here so you guys can see it and then he brought out a vibrating egg. I'm going to put that right here for you. And a bull whip. So here's a bull whip. No thank you. <laughs> so then he introduced Chinese uh, therapy. A Chinese therapy called cupping. Here's a picture of that. I don't like it. I don't like how it looks. Creeps me out. Can't do it. Nope. Sorry. So he used the cup like all over her body. He even put it on her clit to make it swollen. And of course that makes it like super sensitive. Super. Then because she didn't ask for permission for like her fifth orgasm. <laughs> she had to be punished. <laughs> so he got out like some freshly purchased nipple clamps. And um, I might have, here's a picture of those two. Might as well give you a pic. Here's some nipple clamps. So, um, of course, he made her come a few more times. And then when he got to number nine, he wanted her ass. So when they were done, he offered to take her to the Sanford game. And Stanford, why am I saying Sanford? I don't know, Stanford. She, of course, was like, you know, what's the catch? (laughs) He was like, nothing. I just want to go with you. And he was like, listen, I'm going to fuck you regardless whether you go or not. So she, of course, called him an asshole. And then he wondered in his mind, like, shit, could she ever love an asshole? So she goes to get her hair braided. She tells Keisha all about what's been happening. And um, Keisha just gave her some real shit. She was like, the problem is you're thinking too much. You clearly like this damn man. And you need to just enjoy it. If all you're going to have is three days, enjoy those fucking three days. Because the truth of the matter is you really like him. You might as well enjoy it. Stop trying to fight it. That's why you can't fully enjoy yourself because you keep fighting it. And so she kind of listened and she was like, you know what? You're right. You are right. So after she leaves to have drinks uh, with Marissa and a couple of the people from the Tribune, Marissa goes um, to the lair with Miguel. So she's like, you know, I'm not coming home tonight, you know. And so Kamani goes home. Of course, she gets there. (laughs) Old girl is met by two guys. This is kind of scary. Um and she gets thrown down and her head smashed against the door then out of nowhere comes a third guy who's try who tries to wrestle with one of the intruders and then a gun goes off 
So Batar calls Ben and tells him Chin's been shot.